Hey guys, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has the tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. And trust me guys, it works. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And the best of all, it is totally free. Yes, totally free. So download the Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back to the Broke Boy Podcast. Thank you for tuning in, T. Today's guest is... I guess you can say an old friend of mine as well from high school. Um, we didn't really talk much; kind of just would see each other in the locker room, not not the locker rooms, and you know, in the hallways. I mean, and and whatnot. But you know, I decided to have her on as a guest today. Everyone, please welcome Bria Russell, and also she is now a part of the team. Pods in, so there you go. I got coffee. I got my little. Twenty dollar mic. <laughs> is what I got. But nice, nice. But I know for my birthday, I am getting uh, an upgraded mic. So yeah, I don't know that for sure. How does it does it sound better if I have the mic around right here or down here? Up a little bit, like in between the two, is where okay. it sounds the best. Like right here. Yeah, like right there. <laughs> Well, that's where I'm going to have the position of the new mic. <laughs> it would be around right here. Mm-hmm. And, so, and so then yeah. it'll have a boom arm and everything. So when talking, I can you know, have it right here. Shit. Getting all fancy with it. Well, I'm taking it serious. I mean, yeah. Like, I know you're taking it serious, but, like, you get in, like, real podcast shit going on. Yeah, and I didn't because uh, the mic that because my girlfriend already knew about it. I shouldn't have opened my mouth. Uh, the mic that <laughs> I wanted because yeah, because um, obviously when you're listening to a podcast, you want that shit to sound obviously for it to be good. But then like when it comes to sound quality, because if you're gonna listen to it and it sounds like dookie ass, I don't. Think, <laughs> but it, it, let's say it's still good, but just sounds bad. You're like, if the audio was right. better, it would sound good. And right. and so if I get better a better audio, and so mm-hmm. by doing that, I get a better mic. Which uh, a lot of the big podcasters like Joe Rogan, uh, yeah. Paul Siv and all of them have. So I'm like, if I can get that, it sounds better. And then when when the funds start coming in, and I can not only afford a second one, not maybe that one specifically at the moment, just like a different one, or maybe uh-huh. give the guests this one. And right. then right there, we can start doing it in person. So then it's more genuine and the audio sounds better. And right. I, right. I get like an, your own little too. studio. Yeah. In your a own way-ish. like little studio for it. Yeah. Uh, my dog's in here. So if you hear whining, that's why. It's, oh, no, you're yeah. Come but like I said, that's my plan with that. Plus, obviously, my plans with uh, with real estate, with obviously being a realtor and everything. I got plans on how to market myself, uh, and then when I yeah. do have homes, how to market that. And yeah, I just got a lot. So, of do you ever worry? Have. Do you ever worry like that when you sell a house, people are going to like see that you're the same guy from the podcast and be like, "Eh, I don't want to buy a house from this dude. Like, do you ever worry about that? Mm, No, because I'm being myself on the pod and I'm going to be myself Mm -hmm. um, being a realtor. Cause I mean, really, cause I want, I want knowledge in real estate and Mm -hmm. I kept asking myself, you know, how could I get that knowledge? And so I said, well, right. No, um, I don't want. Yes, I can watch YouTube videos, a bunch of YouTube videos, which I have before. But I'm like, mm-hmm. if I obviously I don't have the funds to invest in real estate like right now, so I'm like, how do yeah. I get in real estate? But it's, and still make some great money in real estate, and so then you know, learn it, whatever. 
And that's when I saw about being a real estate agent and as well. And I watched YouTube videos on that. So I was like, okay, cool. And then, cause not only could that help me learn um, real estate plus sales, Mm -hmm. it'll help me learn the sales part too. So then I know how to negotiate Mm -hmm. deals when I have my own, when I'm trying to find my own rental properties, I know how to negotiate and not just say, Oh, I saw this on YouTube. So I think it'll work. I'm just going to turn off my video because I'm getting like really self-conscious about my face. So I'm just like going to turn it completely off. Uh, <laughs> so I don't no even problem. have to worry about it. No, nah, you're good. You're good. But yeah, it's, it's kind of my deal. I've looked at two other bro- two brokerages here in Lincoln. Uh, one of them is very big in Omaha and Lincoln, and that's Nebraska Realty. The other one is very big nationally and internationally. And that's kind of why I want to go with them. Because if at any point, because my girlfriend and I have talked about this, I'm like, if at any point we move completely out of state, like, let's say, go like Texas, Utah, Colorado, wherever we decide to end up. Like the big realty places. mm -hmm. And I'm like, because it'll be Coldwell Banker. And I'm like, well, if I can just transfer offices. That'd be that'd be perfect because I already know how their system works. Yeah, the offices vibe and when I would be different. I just gotta adapt to it. But the system I already know compared to going from only a Lincoln Omaha based of uh, company or brokerage, and then having to find a completely different brokerage that could run things completely different. I'm like, eh, I don't know. And I, I, right. I was having a lot of thought into it. And in the end, I believe I'm going to choose. Me. I know you're good. And in the end, I believe I am going to choose Coldwell for that same reason. Yeah. And so, and plus, and it sounds for like you how got, big. Oh, my bad. It sounds like you got your shit together and you know what you want to do. And like, that's more than I can say for myself. And that's a funny thing is, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. It just happened. Like, it took. Probably a little bit over a year to finally really know kind of what I wanted to do. Because like I said, I didn't really know what to do in college. Uh, but I know I've always been wanting to do something with business because I could just like feel like I've been wanting to, but I never knew how. Right. And But I never knew what uh, which opportunity because I didn't want to um, be like a store manager at Walmart because I – I mean, I know being self-employed is super stressful as well. Mm-hmm. They want to buy it. I mean, they make great money. I'm not saying they make bad money. They make great money, but it wasn't for a company and I wanted to work with. It kind of want to start something myself because then I can create. Right. I can let my creativity flow and have um, words from other people too. Like have like when it comes to a team, like I can let my creativity flow. And let other people creativity flow them, you know, work that way rather than, oh, this is standard policy. This is what corporate wants. And this is what this is what we have to follow. Right. Like that. That's always a hard protocol to fall, follow because I've, you know, worked for small retail places and shit like that. And they're like, oh, well, corporate wants us to have this many things done by the end of the day or we're all getting fired and it's just like stressful. Like we can't make people do what they don't want to do. Like, I think the criteria for it was like, we have to get like so many, um, like not interviews, but like, um, fuck, I can't remember the word, but like, it was like an online survey that they had to take. Oh my God. Yes. And like, my boss was like, Hey, we need like three surveys done like each shift. So it kind of felt like the employees were literally begging people to fill out these damn surveys. Like we shouldn't have to do that. We shouldn't have to sit there and be like, Oh, can you please fill out this survey? Blah, 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 blah. blah. And like, you can't sit there and be like, Oh, if you don't fill it out, I'm going to get fired. Like you can't say that. Mm -hmm. But like, it's just, it's so stressful. And I completely understand why you wouldn't want to put up with that because it's just, it's not fun. (laughs) That's how it is at Walmart right now. At the front end for the uh, self checkouts, there's uh, they always push people to hit for five star, five star, five star. And one day I just got frustrated because they 
because if it doesn't go well, they get super pissy. And so they kind of went off on us. I got a little bit mad. And so I gave my own opinion. And my team is like, you know, we have we have brought that up before to uh, like market and whatnot. And they just say this is how things are, because basically we have they have to maintain that store, I guess, has to maintain minimum a 4.4 star minimum a week. And, that is so stupid. And if it goes below, they push us to get five stars. And that I'm like, so I'm dumb. like, that depends on what the people are feeling. If they don't, if they just don't want to rate good, we're not going to force them. Like we're not going to say, oh, could you pretty please rate us five stars? Like if they want to, <laughs> if they want to rate whatever they want to rate, that is on them because. How? Why does it end up being the front end's fault when it could have? It could be because there's nothing stocked, or it could right. be someone on the floor didn't help them, or electronics did a bad job for this transaction, so they're coming right. up front already pissed because of something from the floor. It's like so that is gonna reflect on us now. I'm like that makes zero sense. And like sometimes people will just like walk into Walmart and like they'll already be pissed. Yeah. So like or by the time that they get done too. shopping, yeah. Like by the time they get done shopping, they're already like so pissed off that they just want to go home. They don't want to deal with anyone's bullshit. So if you're asking them like, hey, can you do a five star rating? That's gonna cause a person to snap. Yeah. They're gonna be like, Why the fuck should I do this? And yeah. You know, and we've brought it up and that that shit annoys me. And so I'm like, yeah, like that's that's other reasons why I'm like, I just, I, w- I like to have my own creativity. And like I said, I mean, I will be professional when it comes to real estate. I'll be myself. I'll be professional. And then the podcast, I'll be myself and right. still in a way be professional. But like, I am talking because this is my other thing. Real estate is real estate. Like if people don't like if oh, I cuss too much, I'm like, Okay. I'll, someone else that doesn't care will will find me. And if hell, someone who let's say loves listening to the podcast knows that I'm a realtor, and that's why they want to be with me because they they listen to it and say, "Hey, we really like it, and we really want to do business with you." I'm like perfect, like right. That would be like the ideal opportunity for you. Like just someone coming up to you and be like, "Yo, I listen to your podcast. Um, hook me up with the house." Yeah, basically. And it's also like, you know, um, me being genuine and real on the podcast uh, and also being genuine and real in the real estate business, it it won't be uh, like there there won't be a di- like a difference. It's not going to be I'm only faking it for the camera. And then when the cameras are off, I'm a complete douchebag. It's like whatever right. you see on camera is what I am. And so then. If they listen and they like it and they want to do business and say, you know, I feel I already feel like I'm your friend. Like I feel comfortable doing business with you. So this makes it easier. Right. And so, yeah, because like I said, cause I go to Coldwell's uh, meetings and uh, when they have talked about the, the marketing aspect of, of of like yourself, you know, mm-hmm. um, they I'll sometimes get asked, you know, like, what do you want to do? Like, um, you know, these, these are great ways to do stuff, but what do you also want to do? And I told them, you know, um, what I see a lot of big YouTubers, cause I watch a lot of YouTube, like what I see a lot right. of them do, especially the people who make tours of houses. I want to record long in-depth YouTube videos of the houses that I'm touring, either it could be my own that I'm representing or others, other people in, in the brokerage or even outside helping just do a video tour. Because if someone's scrolling on YouTube finds a house or puts it in, you know, homes and homes in Lincoln, Nebraska, and one of my videos pops up and they watch the video and say, you know, this house looks nice. The area looks nice. He was well informed. He spoke very clearly. He knows what he's talking about, and that's his own listing. Let me look him up. Did they look me up, you know. And I, they're already marketing myself. And not only did I market myself, but I marketed the house. And now mm-hmm. they've already seen the tour of the house. And let's say they live 
in New Jersey, and now they've already seen a full tour of the house. Maybe they, you know, they can schedule to come see it, but it's like they they saw the full tour, the whole full video tour. So now they would love to see it in person compared right. to pictures. Yeah, you can see pictures, and then you know you can go tour it that way too. Um, and I'm not saying the pictures are bad either, but when you do a video, that grabs the, the their uh, attention, and they could skip through parts they want to see, and mm-hmm. they'll realize you know the way this video was produced makes me want to buy the house because of how nice it looks. Yeah, and and like uh, I sometimes feel like pictures of houses they kind of tend to leave out like the bad parts. It is mm-hmm. chill. Are you done? Yeah? Okay. Um, They leave out the parts that they don't want the people to see. And then when they get there, they're like, oh, there's this small little impurity. It's a fixer-upper. And you're like, what the hell? This isn't what I was shown. Like, this isn't the house I was shown. And and it's funny that you say that because at the meeting, at the last meeting I was at, um, because it was like the marketing like manager or the marketing person, for Coldwell in Omaha, she came by and showed us, you know, just a bunch of stuff that we could do. And in the end, were memes that we can post that they could post too. And one of them literally was Kermit the Frog in the car, like rolling rolling the window up, and it's basically saying, uh, when the house doesn't look like what it was in the photos or something like that, and he's rolling it up, which. <laughs> it, it crackled it crackled me i'm like yeah, that's that's funny and but it's like if i can market it if i can market the house with the s photos but a video a nice good pro- quality video and it's me speaking and because either i'm representing i'm representing the seller so it's my listing or it's a it's a buddy of mine at the same brokerage or whatever it's like i I shout them out, tell them who's representing. I give the tour, and then then people can do business with me or the person I I helped. And right there, not only do I get some, can I get some money from that too? Because I can charge people to do that. But then also, it, you know, it to me it to me it'll be a little bit fun because I'm also doing the due diligence on the house and everything. I do the tour. We do all the background stuff and. Then you know pe- people can see it when they want, right? Like that sounds really professional. Like it just sounds like I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, oh no, you're good. Yeah, like, I'm. I'm proud of you. Like that sounds like a good plan. Like that. I always kind of knew you'd be like the business person, like knowing you in high school. Mm -hmm. I always knew you wanted to go into business, but now that you're like actually doing it, I'm like, whoa, shit. Like he's following up on his word. Like not a lot of people are able to say something and then back it up, whether it's, you know, financial problems or like simply just life changing. Like not everyone can sit there and be like, oh yeah, this is what I want to do and actually like follow up on it. Mm Mm-hmm. Why, thank you. Just, I mean, I still have to pass the test. I mean, I still need to pass. Right. I mean, yeah. I failed it three times, but I still need to pass Ooh. it. And once I pass it, when I can finally do that. And I'm like, I, I mean, it, it's a pretty hard test if you failed it three times. Like, you're a smart guy. And like, knowing what you were like in high school, I knew you were smart. Just like, it has to be a pretty fucking hard test if like you failed it three times. Like, it's, it's it's a lot. It's a lot of memorization. That's kind of just like with any test. I mean, you do in a way also have to know what what you're seeing. Um, but it a lot of it, the test can be. It's a lot of memorization um, because how it how it runs is uh, when you actually sit down do the test. It's ninety question. It's they break it down national and state. National, it's 90 questions for, uh, um, I think it's 150 minutes. And then after you get done with that, right in, right after it is a state portion, which is 55 questions. I believe you get 90, 90 minutes on that one. Jesus. And which is, 
which is plenty of enough time. But it's when you look at a lot of them, you're like, holy crap, I got to think on these. It, it, that's what has happened with me before. And yeah, I mean, it's, that's the only stump that I'm on is having to pass the real estate exam. Cause once I pass it and then hang my license there, then I can grind it out and do, and, and just do what I want on there because they talked about marketing on social media and I, and I told the lady, I'm like, I want to market on Facebook because of how big Facebook is, it'll grab the mm-hmm. attention of the older generation. I want to market on Instagram, tw- uh, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube slash YouTube Shorts, and Snapchat because that'll then that'll gain the attention of millennials and my generation, and and even younger generations with TikTok. Like, have you seen yeah. that one? Uh, TikTok post where it's like, oh, your business explodes if you use this one filter, and it's like a guy just floating in a boat. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. And it's like the weird like song in the background. I don't know what the song mm-hmm. is, but it's just like it kind of reminds me of the Titanic in a way. I know. I think I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, like I've seen small businesses explode that way just from that one TikTok. Huh. But and but then also a thing that I don't want to happen is that is that quick rapid um I I guess you can say like success um because I want I don't want a short term I want a long term because I want that right. business to keep going long term I don't want a short quick uh boost because then you have to maintain it. And if you don't maintain it, you are now screwed because then people are going to forget about you, especially on how bad people's retentions are in my generation because of TikTok. (laughs) They're going to lose interest fast. And it's like, they all just got fucking ADHD. And it's all because of TikTok and TikTok is smart on what they do. That's, I mean, it's algorithm based and the algorithm knows what you watch and it, it reads you. And that's why it's hard to escape for a lot of people in our age, it's hard for them to escape TikTok because it knows them. It knows what they want, so that it pu- it pushes out what they want. And right. um, and I mean, YouTube is big too because they they kind of do it too. You watch a Markiplier video, they're gonna push out more Markiplier and similar YouTubers out like that. You watch with me with the guy that that i w- that i've watched when it came to the house tours her name's mm-hmm. uh inez i've watched him and more videos of him got pushed out plus other youtubers that do how other like realtors and just youtubers that do house tours they get pushed out so then i get to see more of them and so it's uh, that's how and especially with tiktok with how sh- with how short a lot of them are the videos mm-hmm. clips it's, yes i would like to have some successes on tiktok and youtube shorts and and reels but i don't want just a quick one and then it's and then it's gone like i want right, that, that long makes term sense. and that's yeah, why long-term i want to use stability. facebook and youtube uh as well because youtube you can keep rewatching that video cuz tiktok you like it or share it once and you probably will never see it again. Like, right. yes, it's saved or you in your liked or you're bookmarked, but you'll never watch it again. YouTube, right. kind of the same thing on YouTube. But if then let's say I don't know or you're interested in that house. So you keep watching back. You keep pointing out some details. Then you want to make the call and say, let me contact that realtor or let me contact him and and make business. Right, and so I, I don't know that's, that's I just have a lot that I want to do, and that's why ever since um i've I had that goal of being a millionaire by thirty, I'm like i I've, i need to I need to get there because eight years is a lot, a lot can happen in eight years. And so I got to use that to the best of my ability because in those eight years, who knows? I could reach it by the eighth year. I could reach it by the fourth year. It's just right. if I 
if I get it now and do it, I can I can get it rather than saying I'll just put money in a savings and just do it that way because surprise, surprise, I'm going to be probably by the age of 50 or 60 to reach it. And like with the whole TikTok thing, um, it is so easy to go on like a rabbit hole, just like rampage of TikTok after TikTok. Like they've even implemented videos that are like, stop, hey, you've been watching TikTok too long. And I'm guilty of it myself. Most people just scroll past those. Mm -hmm. And like some people can spend, you know, upwards eight to 10 hours on TikTok. And with how short they are, you're consuming a lot of information. And the algorithm is so fucking smart. It reads that. So then the next, so then when you close out of TikTok two minutes later, you go back onto it, you got new TikToks to watch because it's pushing Mm -hmm. out so much. And so fucking weird. And so if I can use that to my ability when it comes to being a realtor and doing all these tours and whatnot, Mm -hmm. it to me, I feel like it'll, it'll help me. And I told her about that and she's kind of what you said of you, you know what you want to do. I'm like, yeah, I mean, if I can have people, cause I don't want to have yes men in, in my group. I want to have people who, you know, who are, yes, there to support me, but also there to humble me in a way of help me actually like, get, like gather ideas and not just be yes men. And so, right. if, you know, if let's say there, um, there's a person there that does it. I can learn from them and we can work with each other and see what works and what doesn't. And so that's, that's me. (laughs) I've already (laughs) rambled, but I've already rambled on that. And so. (laughs) I mean, yeah, I get it. You don't want people who are just like, yep, 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 yep. Like push this out, push this out, push this out. You want people who challenge your thinking and kind of not like criticize you in a way but give you that constructive feedback like feedback yeah so you're able to know what you need to do and what you've already done mm -hmm. to put out new content exactly like let's say again like a house tour let's say we watch the full video on let's say on on how i edited it or whoever edited it and we nitpick in not like nitpick nitpick but see oh you know we could do this better maybe maybe let's go back or not just go back let's just try to find some b-roll shots add it here and then fix some problems up and then say you know it now looks good rather than okay uh because you're the boss yes it looks good and then i'll be like okay cool i'll post it and then it ends up being just like absolute trash because it's just the yes man yeah and so that's why you know, if I get that feedback from, from people like that, mm-hmm. both obviously posting content like that and even on the on the podcast, like you know, if I start getting more people and let's say more people start listening and I get the feedback of, hey, you know, um, I really like to listen to your podcast, but maybe could you, um, let's say, again, like let's say like higher up the audio quality or or ask better questions. And I'll be like, that's okay. Like, I want to ask better questions. How can I do that? And, but if they say, you need to stop cussing a lot, I'm like, well, that's just who I am. I'm not going to change who I am. Right. Like, what I want to better on how, um, what I want to better the podcast and how I ask questions and how I talk to people for sure. But I'm not going to say, I'm not going to try to change the way that I am. Am, like, am I going to be racist to someone? No, but <laughs> of course not. Like, why would you just like <laughs> pop out of the closet and be like, <laughs> "Screw fucking, this, and screw that"? Fucking <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> and, and it's like, like I'm not going to say that, but right, like that's who does that? Who just like, oh, you need to up your content? Okay, let's be racist. I mean, you'd, be, the I mean, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how people are. And, but that's, that's, that's me. But I know you did also say, to, I know we're going completely off topic because, you know, it's, it's, been me, it's been me talking. But I know you <laughs> did say something about breaking your collarbone. How'd that happen? 
Okay, so it was October 29th, and we were out at my boyfriend's family ranch. And um, where'd you go? I'm getting you just gone. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm getting oh, water. I can hear- Okay, I was like, he's just gone. Anyway, um, sister, I'll leave some of the names, like, redacted, so, like, privacy, I guess. Because I don't know everyone who wants to be on the podcast, so I'm just going to kind of, like, leave the detail out. His um, older sister had just bought a new, well, not new, but a used four-wheeler from someone, and it... He's like, oh, yeah, I drive it in the hills all the time. Like, it's fine. You can do work on it, blah, 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 blah. This four-wheeler, Marco, I'm telling you, it was the, like, it was a light Mm four-wheeler. But it looked like it was just random parts, like, stuck and pieced together. Like, it looked janky. It was that redneck style. (laughs) Yeah. So, anyway, we're getting the cows. We're rounding them up. We've got... You know, the, the baby is separated from the moms to set off, send off to slaughter or sell barn or whatever. And mm-hmm. um, the four-wheeler dies. And we're like, okay, we'll just pull it back with the truck. And my boyfriend's mom was like, hey, I need one of you two to ride on the four-wheeler to, like, steer it so we can get it back to the house and I'm like I'll do it and my boyfriend was like no let me do it and I like begged and pleaded with him I'm like please let me do it I really want to he's like fine so we're driving the four-wheeler or the truck with the four-wheeler behind it and the four-wheeler starts fishtailing and I'm like I can kind of start to feel this very odd feeling where I'm like oh shit Maybe this mm-hmm. isn't a smart idea. And I start to feel the four-wheeler flip. Like, it goes completely sideways. And I black out. And the way I landed was my neck went to the side and my shoulder hit the ground and took most of the brunt force of it. So mm-hmm. I ended up breaking the collarbone and, like, tearing some muscles in my neck. And I remember just being like blacked out. And when I woke up, I was on my back and my boyfriend was off to my side and he was just sobbing. Like he was scared. And his mom was like sitting next to me, holding my hand. And his sister, the one who had brought, bought the four wheeler was on the phone with the cop. She's like, yo, we just had someone flip a four-wheeler. We need an ambulance out here right now. She she could have a back injury, a neck injury. She could have multiple injuries. Like, we need someone out here ASAP. And they're like, okay, an ambulance will be there in about an hour and a half. And his sister's <laughs> like, no, we need someone now. Hour and, and a like, half? Yes, because it's they're in the middle of nowhere. They're on their lunch break. It's in the middle of nowhere. So to get an ambulance out there, it would take a whole hour and a half for them to get out there. Plus all the traffic in Rapid City, plus like anything that stops them from getting there will stop them. So they probably like, had to stop for some gas on their way to the hospital. Probably they're like, hold gas. on, we gotta get gas. <laughs> so they're like, fine, we'll send out we'll send out a helicopter. So I was flight for life and I'm laying on the ground. They're like, okay, it'll be 30 minutes before the helicopter gets there. So I'm laying on the ground and they're like, keep her awake. Don't let her fall asleep. She could have, you know, serious, serious injuries. They're like, okay, we'll keep her awake. Just get here like quickly. Like we don't know what's going on. She could have, you know, brain Mm -hmm. damage. She could have everything. And I'm, they get off the phone and I'm laying there and I try to sit up and Jesse's like, no, like don't sit up, lay back down. A lot could be wrong with you. And I'm like, okay. And, um, could you feel like, what pain happened? during that time? Not, not yet. Um, I asked my boyfriend, I was like, what happened? He's like, you flipped the four wheeler. I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you, you flipped the four wheeler. And I'm like, okay. And as I'm sitting there, I start to feel this like blinding pain, just shooting from my shoulder up my neck into my head, like my entire body is just 
pain. Mm. And um, I'm just laying there. And about 10, 15 minutes before the helicopter gets there, I start dozing off because the impact of it, like, damaged some of my brain. So I was, like, falling asleep. Mm -hmm. And they had to, like, keep, like, tapping my cheek and, like, not really shaking me, but, like, kind of, like, wiggling me Mm -hmm. to kind of, like, get me to wake up. And finally, the helicopter gets there. Finally. Like, it felt like days laying on the the ground because i i later found out i landed on a piece of dried cow shit (laughs) so i'm just laying on this dried piece of cow poop in the middle of this field and they like they put in an iv except they put it in wrong which later i found out so i had no morphine in my system i had no painkillers in my system when they put me into this helicopter So we like get up in the helicopter, we're going and I had asked them to close the shade in the helicopter because like with the blades of the helicopter, the way the helicopter is situated. Yeah. Cause they had me on a flat board. I was looking up at the ceiling and with the blades spinning, it was really bright. So I closed my eyes and it caused a strobe effect. And I was laying there and they didn't close the shade. And I was laying there and I'm like, guys, I'm going to throw up. And they didn't hear me. And I'm like, I yelled a little bit louder. I'm like, guys, I'm going to throw up. And I just started like throwing up and it just landed back on my face. It was disgusting. Ugh. Um, Yeah, it was, it was pretty gnarly. Um, But they like sucked it off my face and like out of my nose and all that. And then they get me into the hospital and all these nurses are rushing around me and I'm panicking. I'm like, where's Justin? Cause Justin's my boyfriend. I'm like, where's Justin? And they're like, he's on his way. You're fine. We're going to take good care of you. And I'm like, no, where is he? Like, I, I need him. And they're like, he's on his way. Just chillax. You're fine. And the nurse is like, what did you guys give her for pain? Because she should not be screaming as we're moving her onto this bed. And they're like, oh, we gave her five milligrams of morphine. And the nurse checked my uh, IV and she said the IV was in there kinked. So none of it got into my system. Oh. And I was just screaming in pain. And they finally got it fixed, administered morphine. And it hit me. And I was like down for the count. Like I didn't feel pain unless someone like touched me. I was, like, tired. I was able to finally, like, take a nap while they were waiting for the CT scans. But, like, Justin came. He was sobbing. He's like, oh, my God, I thought you were going to die. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm alive. I'm fine, just in a lot of pain. And he's like, I never should have let you get on that four-wheeler. Like, this should be me in this hospital bed right now. Like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, it's not your fault. Like if God has a plan for everyone, this is kind of a fucked up plan, but I guess I'll just live with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, after several orthopedic appointments and months of healing, I'm, I'm starting to do better. I can move my arm with very little pain. Um, I can sleep properly because the first few months I could not sleep or the first few weeks I could not sleep I had to either sleep on my back while elevated or sleep on the chair in our living room because I was not able to lay flat because the way it broke it was like converged on itself so it was like parallel And Mm -hmm. then it finally, like, as it healed, it kind of, like, went back to normal. And my last x-ray that I had, it was, you could see some of the bone where it was starting to heal. It looked like a big, um, like a big knot. And they said it'll, like, smooth itself out over the years, but it'll never, you know, be as strong as what it once was. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's the story of my accident. (laughs) I just know the hospital bill was high. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The hospital bills are 
fucking insane. Just for the helicopter to have landed probably was already a charge. Right. Like the hospital bill, the way the hospital bills is they have the hospital itself and then the ER visit. Mm. So it's two different bills. And before, because I had a job with insurance Mm -hmm. and before insurance, it was upwards $25,000 for the main hospital bill alone. Jesus. And I looked at the price of the morphine. They were charging like, I don't remember what it was, but it was hundreds of dollars for morphine. I would have argued with them on that and said, well, because, you know, on the way here, because they didn't administer it right, could the, could I get some of that off? Because that's not right. Like, yes, like, yes, um, out of uh, probably out of panic, out of on that on their end. Mm-hmm. And and just like, you know, time was of the essence right. for them. Like, I understand, like, you're you're trying to you know help this person the fastest you can. Mm-hmm. And so if they made a mistake. You shouldn't get charged for them for that mistake, because also right. and- you didn't sign any papers at the time, meaning during that time, nothing because you know how it is in the hospital. They make you sign and say you mm-hmm. will not sue us. And so during that for that ride, like you didn't have any paper sign. I mean, you could pro- maybe in a way. I don't know. I don't know how that any of that shit works. Right, but the, but here's my counterpoint to that. Um, when I was released, and a few days like after the accident, my job was like okay since you were you had the accident while you were still working here we're gonna pay for the medical bills and i think the insurance paid for that oh wow so i don't even gotta touch it like they took thousands of dollars off of this bill like right now i think it's in the thousands that i have to pay Mm -hmm. off of a twenty five thousand dollar bill so like and then I here here's the whole kicker of the situation. I then got fired or not fired but forced to resign from my job because you don't have any salary not allowed days left and I'm just like okay, like I even filled out this um this like family act thing that says you can like leave work to help mm-hmm. either yourself or your family. And, and they'll hold your job for you until you're ready to come back. I even filled this out. And my boss was like, nope, this is your res- resignation. You're done. Oh, my God. And I I fought it. I fought it. I was like, no, I do not resign. I sent you these papers. And I know I sent you these papers. Because at the time, I couldn't leave the house. So I had my boyfriend's mom send you these papers. And... That woman, my my boyfriend's mom, is not a liar. She is the most honest person I have ever met. Like, this woman is no bullshit. Mm -hmm. So I know she sent those papers. And my boss was like, nope, we didn't get the papers. Blah, 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 blah. And after I'm like, no, I do not resign. I didn't hear from her for weeks. Like, I heard nothing from this woman. And I'm finally like, you know what? I cave. I resign. I'm not going to fight with you anymore. I'm not going to fight for a job that obviously doesn't value my life as a person, value my worth, et- my work ethic, nothing. Like, I am just done. So technically, I resigned, but it was a forced resignation. Damn it. If, if you had that money, would you have tried to fight it with a lawyer? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Like I was told by several people that people they're like, Brie, you need to get a lawyer. And I'm just like, uh, I don't have the funds for that. Like I have bills to pay for. It's either bills or a lawyer. And even then, if I get a lawyer, we could lose the case. Yep. And then you gotta pay even more. So I'd rather just right. I'd rather just save the money, use it for bills. Um it has drained my bank account. Like I, I maybe have like fifty five dollars in my bank account because of this accident. Like it was a complete freak accident. I don't blame anybody for it. 
but like it is intense the way that the government and the medical system just like they know people don't have twenty five dollars just twenty five thousand dollars just shooting out of their ass like they mm-hmm. know that no oh, yeah and if you have twenty five thousand dollars just shooting out of your ass and you can pay it right there up front like they're not even gonna bother with billing you because the longer you take to pay the bill the lo- the short like the amount of time between the accident and the time it goes to collections they get money they get paid mm-hmm. so as long as you're not immediately paying the bill that's what they want they want you to be struggling it feels like it feels like that but i don't know if that's what it is i mean it's, it's all biz- it it's all like. business right um, I mean, it's shady business because um, that as much as hospitals are needed, like everything of that is needed when it comes mm-hmm. to the stupidly ridiculous prices. You're like, why? Mm-hmm. Why the hell is it so expensive? Like, why are you giving me ibuprofen that's and you're charging me 500 when I can walk into Walmart or Walgreens and buy a little small, I can buy a little travel sized pack for a buck or two for the right. same thing you guys just gave me. Like, why am I getting charged yeah. 500 for a little bit of what you gave me? And I don't know. That's why, well, when I had my appendicitis, um, I don't remember if you, I don't know if you remember. Um, it was my, yeah, it was my freshman year of high school. It was a home game against Leighton, and I was feeling, after lunch, I was feeling some stomach pains, and at first I thought, ooh, the food I ate isn't going well with me, but as the day went on, it was more so, it wasn't pain inside of my actual organ, it was pain outside of that, around Mm -hmm. there, and I'm like, ah... I don't know about this. And so I just kind of kept with the day. The pain eased a little. And so I was like, "Ah, I was just maybe at first I was like, you know, it's just maybe um, I'm like gassed up and maybe it's just a fart that just is struggling to come out or something. So I was like, okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm an actual child. I still laugh at fart jokes. I'm sorry. Oh no, you're good. So I thought, okay, maybe maybe it's that or whatever. And Cotton was joking of, "What do you need to go to the bathroom?" You know, just laughed. And I'm like, no, it. The pain feels different than that. And um, it, it was just so bad during the late game. I told him, "Hey, I gotta go home or go to a hospital because I do not feel good." And right. he pulled me to the side. Um, was like, hey, like, are you completely sure? I'm like, yeah, like, I do not feel well. I, like, I I'm, think I do remember that. Like, I'm gonna cry. Like, I, the pain is bad. Like, I need to, I need to leave. And he's like, okay, uh, you know, go ahead and leave. I left, and then I went home. I showed my mom my stomach. I told her, hey, I'm feeling pain right here, and she said it looked inflamed. And she's like, yeah, we gotta get you to the hospital because that does not look normal. Went to the hospital. Yeah. And um, that's when you know I they took me in, they gave me morphine. I didn't feel any pain, and I was getting a little bit sleepy. Uh, but then the the surgeon came, and he's like, "All right, so you know, being the joking one, he was. He was just like, oh, hey, all right, you know, what's your name? Whatever. We just talked, mm-hmm. and then he explained. He's like, you know, um, from the sounds of it, it does sound like appendicitis, and and whatnot. So he just kept explaining a bunch of stuff and you know, just reassured us. And so then, you know, it was all cool. And so he's like, okay, well, we will take you to the surgery to, to like the room, um, here in a, here in a little bit, just preparing some stuff, but, um, we'll, we'll come over when it's time for, for, for you to do surgery. I'm like, all right, cool. And I mean, at least it. they were diligent about it. Yeah, they were cool about it, which it was scary because it's regional West. You can't trust regional mm-hmm. West. Oh, God, no. I have plenty of horror stories about regional West. Yeah, I'm saying like you can't <laughs> trust regional West. So I was even like, even okay, working cool. there, it was like shit. Yeah, yeah like, I've, even I've working heard people, there. Yeah, I've heard people hate it, hate it <laughs> working in there. It, yeah. How it is for regional West, how what I've heard with that is uh, 
if you're working at like the the lower class, like the bottom of the tier, like a food service, mm-hmm. like and like anything that pay that's probably paying a minimum wage or whatever, you're gonna get treated like shit unless you're oh yeah. Unless yeah, uh, you have a degree to your name. Unless yeah, you're you're a nurse there. You're like like an RN. You're a doctor. You're whatever. You have a title to yourself with backed up with a degree. You are treated like royalty there. If oh, you yeah. are just uh, you just have a diploma to your name, or don't even have a diploma to your name, and you're just there because you needed a job, they're gonna treat you like actual dog shit. Because they're like you don't. And they have. They've done it to, to us. me. Yeah, they're like, we yeah, don't mean done shit it to, to me. Us. It's awful. Yeah, it's it's awful. I I worked for food service at the hospital, and it was one of the worst fucking times in my life. Like, I would because I worked in you know the park bench, the little um, restaurant, quote unquote, that they had there. No, I didn't and, even know they had like a little restaurant there. Yeah, they have a little restaurant called the Park Bench, and I worked in there, and like nurses and doctors would come in to get food and they'd be like, okay, I'd be like, how can I help you? Like, like, what do you want? And they'd tell me and I'd make it. And then if I didn't make it to their exact specifications, they would like give me a dirty look. Kind of like I was just this hobo working there. Mm -hmm. And like, I would have to take, food up to patients rooms and like there's a certain protocol you have to follow you have to like knock on the door announce who you are go in help them with their like bedside table thing Mm -hmm. and with the bedside table thing you have to put the bottom part of it underneath the bed so the top is over the person and i could not figure out for the longest time how to get this bed or this table under the bed so i'm like pushing this thing and it's like rocking this guy's bed and I called a nurse I was like hey I can't get this under the bed like can you help and she's like yeah and then she's like oh you just have to press this button I'm like I was told I'm not supposed to touch anything in this room I'm not supposed to press buttons I'm not supposed to touch the patients I'm not even supposed to technically touch their door without the hand sanitizer Mm -hmm. so The fact that she was just like looking at me like, oh, you incompetent piece of shit. You're you just have to press this button. Like, I'm not allowed to do that. So the fact that like she was just like looking down on me like I was a dumbass, it made me feel really embarrassed. Those are the worst. Yeah, it was it was embarrassing because the patient was like, oh, don't worry about it, sweetie. You're fine. Like, I know you're not supposed to touch things. The way she treated you was just awful. Like, you're okay. It's fine. And I'm just like, like, I had lost all of my livelihood. I was just like, eat well, have a nice night. And I just left. I was like, I can't even be nice to people after that. Because it's just like, if you're going to treat me like shit, you're going to tear down my mood. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, as if I've heard other people's uh, horror stories of that hotel. Not God, why did I say hotel? <laughs> Hospital. And yeah. like I said, unless you don't have a title with your name, like uh, a degree behind your title, you're going to get treated like shit. And the people there are so entitled because, I mean, not only A, look where the hospital's at, but B, where it's at, you look at the houses you you look at the neighborhoods and you realize yeah a, a lot of the, like the doctors the nurses and whatnot live nearby that's why these that's why the real estate in that area is so damn good because a lot of mm-hmm. those people a lot of entitled healthcare workers uh, live in that neighborhood plus that hospital making the money it makes and right and it's 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 one of those things where in a way I was glad I never got a job there because of not only the horror stories but just you know, that hospital never had never had any trust. And I was surprised they patched me up good after my surgery. Mm-hmm. I, I like I went in there uh like after they took me in 
I was there. We were still joking. And he's like, put on this mask. Um, it'll help you breathe during the procedure. I'm like, perfect. Okay, cool. I was going and nothing was working. So they had to crank it up. And that's when I started seeing stars and whatnot. I started getting sleepy. I passed out and woke up with a little bit of stained blood. But I, you know, they did everything they did. I was there for one night. And to this day, I've still been fine there. And I'm like, they they did a good job. Like I'm, as much as bad rep I have I have had in that area and others have had in that hospital. Mm-hmm. They they did a good job. I'll be honest. They they did a good job when they did my procedure. Yeah. But I'm like, I I I I, I still don't trust that place. Uh and uh toil for like a lot of like more bigger situations, like more dangerous situations. A lot of people go down to Colorado. Mm-hmm. A lot of people go like this is one in Loveland. That one, I mean, that one's really good. I think it's in Loveland. That one's really good. And a lot of people that I know, like my family, they go down there because that one's such a good one. Right. And I am so glad my accident did not happen in the panhandle because I had already had a bad experience with the hospital, not even as an employee, but just like as a patient. I had already Mm -hmm. had such a bad experience with them that I know that if I would have went there with a broken collarbone, they would have just been like, Oh, you're fine. Walk it off. Yeah. And I mean, that's what rapid basically did, but like they did the extensive tests like, Oh, did she break her neck? Did she break her back or any other bones broken? And I really felt cared for at rapid Mm -hmm. because in Scott's Bluff at Regional West, I have always kind of had um, intestinal issues. So one time I had went in. You got the the poopies. No, not really the poopies. (laughs) More of the throwy uppies to where you can't hold down food more than five minutes. You can't drink. Like, I couldn't drink water. I couldn't eat food. I could barely move out of bed. Like, I was just so physically weak. So I, like, basically kind of crawled my way into the ER. I was like, look, I need help. And they're just like, okay, go sit here for an hour. I sat in that waiting room for upwards of, like, maybe four hours before they pulled me back, which is understandable. Like, there's other people who needed it more, but, like, sitting in that waiting room and just like dry heaving in front of all these people is just so embarrassing. Like I couldn't even make it to the bathroom because I could hardly fucking walk. It was so bad. And then I get back to the freaking room and they weigh me. And like the previous time I had been weighed, like was like a couple months earlier. Mm. I had lost 15 pounds since that previous weighing. So they weighed me and I was like, whoa, I I lost 15 pounds. Like, this isn't okay. Something is wrong. And they basically, you know, they did all the tests and stuff. And they're like, well, your blood works fine. Everything seems fine. You're fine. And I'm like, so what now? They're like, we don't know. And I'm like, okay, I'm still writhing in pain. Can you at least give me something for the pain? And they're like, no. We've had trouble with people just coming in here for morphine and getting addicted to it. And that's what they thought. Rapid City. (laughs) That's what. (laughs) No, this was in this was in fucking Bluffs. Oh shit! West. Yeah. Oh shit. (sighs) So I was like, okay, I'm not here for the morphine. I was just asking if you could give me, you know, some something else that isn't you know, regular ibuprofen because regular ibuprofen wasn't helping. I would just throw it back up. And they're like, well, I guess we can give you this stuff that we give people or patients before they get like a, a scope done. Like we can give you some numbing stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. And after they gave me the numbing stuff, they're like, okay, you're good to go home. And I'm just like, 
Okay, so I'm like stumbling out of the freaking ER and I called my guardian at the time because I was still living with my guardians. I was like, they did nothing. They gave me numbing stuff and they're sending me home. They don't know what's wrong with me. They didn't even like check to see what was wrong with me. Like they didn't do a scope. They didn't do nothing. And I know that's not really their profession or their job to do. But like you think if someone came in with very bad abdominal pain and complaining that they can they've lost weight and they can barely move that they would Mm -hmm. do something about it but they didn't and then two days later i was back in the er because it got worse like i couldn't even hold a cup because i was so weak and they're like well you're just being a hypochondriac at this point if you come in again we're gonna admit you to the to the psych ward and i'm just like I have a serious problem and you guys aren't doing anything about it. You didn't even recommend me to a different doctor. You just kind of left me high and dry and expected me to just magically wake up one day and be fine. Mm -hmm. And I still had to go to work there at the hospital on top of all of this. And I was just like this, this place, I need to get out. I need to get out of this place because of the people, because of, the area i just i can't deal with it anymore that's why i mean that's why I, not that reason of the hospital but just the area the people just mm-hmm. no opportunities i'm like i gotta get the hell out of here and that's why when i told you uh, unless you're in the medical unless you're gonna do anything in the medical field or anything with agriculture, stay there. Mm -hmm. If not, it's not worth your time. It's not. It's really not. Right. I don't know. I don't know how people would do it. I mean, I mean, they become nurses and farmers and that's the only way to make a living there. Yeah. And, and it's funny because a lot of people that, uh, that do become nurses and farmers and all the fun shit start becoming entitled or they were already entitled before they started. I'm like, don't right. act entitled just because you have that title. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you're making some good money, but don't act entitled. Like, I know you're saving lives, but don't use that title just because, like, don't, like, like you know what I'm trying to say? Like, don't use that title mm-hmm. to make yourself feel good. Right. Because that can get ripped away from you. You do one big mistake, they take that away from you. And then right. you can't they're using be a nurse it almost anymore. as like a power. They're using yeah. it almost as like a power, like how politicians do. Like they see that, oh, I have this big status. People are supposed to respect me. You don't get respect unless you are respectful. Mm-hmm. And and that's always been my philosophy. If you ain't gonna respect me, I am not gonna waste my time and try to respect you. Yeah, because it's like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go down kiss your shoes, uh, because you want me to like, right? Like, like if you're gonna respect me from the start, like cool, you fuck yeah, I'll respect you. But if you're gonna, um, again, be entitled, I'm like no, that that's why that's why uh, when I told you that I, even though yes, I was somewhat popular in high school really wasn't and it was because of again entitlement of the whole popular group like i don't i don't want to be i don't want i don't want to have that title of entitlement of that and plus that's not like that's pretty childish to have entitlement of popularity in high school right and i don't know like and even then, when I, I like outside of that, I see it. And I'm like, no, I, I, I just can't. I, yeah, like, yes. Yeah. If I have a cool, if I have a cool title, in my name, like, oh, you're a podcast host and a realtor. That's amazing. Like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. I'm, but I'm you're not gonna, gonna let it go to your head. Yeah, I'm still gonna respect you. Like, if I, yeah, let's say I, oh yeah, I interview Scott Frost, and then people are like, oh my god, he interviewed him. Like, yeah. But I'm not going to talk to you different. I'm not going to talk to him different. Like, right. You're going to be humble about it. You're not going to be like fucking some douchebag just fucking throwing money everywhere. Like, 
money bags. I mean, yeah, I know you've expressed your like your feelings on like going to Walmart and just like blowing some extra cash that you have. Like if if you have that money, go for it. Like do good for the people. But like you're not gonna I know you, you're not gonna like sit there and just brag about it and be like, Oh yeah, I, I did this and this and this and this and I'm so entitled that I can just blow money. Yeah, that's what it's always it's always coming from those uh, beginnings. I'm not saying I came from the poorest family and whatnot. Like I, I came from a lower, lower middle class uh, family. Mm-hmm. Like it was still, they could still afford stuff, but it's not like a lot of these people that go on all of these ridiculous uh, vacations, a lot of mm-hmm. all these like cars and trips they can take, and all this stuff they have. I'm like, I n- never really had the ability to do that on a constant basis so when growing up when i have the money where i can go on trips and i can do that am i gonna post on social media like you know had fun over here at you know taiwan like yeah but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say you know like you fuckers like you got like i like some cringy ass like post or like try to target in a way like I'm like, like I'm trying to brag. Right. Same with like, if I act like you're better than people. Yeah. Like if that's like with a people, like with a lot of the people that I used to be in high school that I do not talk to anymore, who probably still think they're hot shit because they're a name, (laughs) they're a household name in that town or in Scott's bluff or in the, or just the panhandle alone. But cool. That's, that that's cute. Like, cool. Like, (laughs) I, I, that, that's cool. You're like that. Just know, right? Like, like, cool. Just, just know, like, I had, I had more hunger. I'm not. I, I totally respect you. That you, people know you. People know your name. Cool. Holy I know. Shit. I, I've, I've talked that? with all these higher. I've talked with higher ups. Like you're, like you're not special. I've, I've talked with higher ups. I've, mm-hmm. I've talked with high, like, like I've talked to like psychology, like psychologist without having to actually like obviously i do a schedule like do meetings like like you know what i mean like i like i yeah i'm doing other like i'm i'm doing other bigger stuff that having a popular name in this town i don't doesn't mean shit right and, and like i know those popular names that you're referring to like i could probably name like three off the top of my head and it's just like thinking back to how those people were in high school. It's just like, what are you doing now? Like you're still thriving on the popularity you gained in high school. Like you peaked in literally in high school. Like, what are you doing with your life? You ain't doing shit. Exactly. Man. And I, I, I mean, all... I can't really speak much to that cause I'm not doing shit at the moment either, but that's like mm. because of an injury, but like, <laughs> I just see people all the time on like social media and they're like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm doing this and this and this and this. And it's like, cool. But like, you're also still thriving off the popularity you've got in high school. Like, don't you ever want to grow up and move on and like make new friends? Yeah. That's and like meet new people. And that's why I told you high school is a weird fucking place. Oh my God. Yeah, it is. It's you go, weird. you enter from not knowing shit to you snorted coke off of the coach's back at <laughs> practice. Like it, 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 it can just fucking go like that. Like it goes so wrong in so many ways. It's just, it's weird. Like, man, it's funny because my freshman year was obviously completely different than my senior year. Because in my mm-hmm. senior year, when I saw a lot of the uh, junior high and freshies, and how a lot of them were starting to get in trouble, were vaping in the bathroom, were smoking weed on school grounds. I'm like, yeah, Ooh. like we didn't like, do I that didn't have shit. any of that. Like, I didn't have any of that shit happen uh, when I was a <laughs> freshman. Like a lot of us were, a lot of us thought we were the hot shit because we had because the girls had fucking lip gloss on their lips, and you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> like people thought they were that like people thought they were hot shit. Like, oh, you have the iPhone 5C that has the back color plate on it. People thought you were hot wow. shit. Wow. I know, like, right? Like people 
such a weird dynamic. Like you but, go in knowing nothing about exactly. like education or anything, and you come out knowing that the education system system is just so fucked. Like teachers get paid so little for what they do, and so many of the students just treat them like absolute shit. I don't know, I'm like, don't like they're doing the best they can. Like, don't fucking treat them like ass. Like, they're doing the best right. they can. That's why I, just I, I had a living. huge respect for Foster. As much as oh, Foster yeah. would go off topic and whatnot, I had respect for him because I'm like, he's right. He he's still pushing, and he's still teaching. Like, even though yes, uh, for it being history, a lot of the history shit I just did not like. Um, because it was boring as fuck. I was right. like, he's still humbling. In my senior year, how we had to take a government class where he would teach some people kind of real world stuff. I'm like, this is what we need. Like, you're helping yeah. us. I'm like, um, with, uh, you know, Mr. Ellis, with science, with, uh, my senior year, I didn't have a science class with him, but from freshman on uh, junior, I did. Um, he he never really taught us, and we never had any right. cool projects to do. And I and with like your class and the all and the other classes, like oh, mm-hmm. we did this, we did that. I'm like, y'all did shit. We didn't do anything. We did more tests and papers than Seriously, experiments. You guys- you guys didn't like dissect shit or nothing. We dissected stuff, um, but when didn't you? I don't know if it was your class or the class before. I don't know if they said something about dissecting a cat or dissecting a shark or something. Yeah, we dissected sharks, like little baby. I don't remember what kind of shark it was, but it was little fetuses. Yeah, the mo- the biggest animal that we dissected was was the pig and we had to beg him we had to beg mr ellis to dissect the pig seriously you had to beg and he finally agreed he finally agreed to my good my goodness i remember us telling him telling us we were going to dissect the cat but i don't think we ever did i thought i I might be wrong about the shark i don't i don't know i don't completely remember about the shark so if i'm wrong about that and someone calls me on it like i'm completely fucking sorry like i don't remember what we were doing in fucking ninth tenth grade like i had other shit to worry about i know like like it's like the the other shit i gotta worry about is if my fit is fly enough for my crush like that's what, <laughs> that's, a, that's the type of shit i have to worry about like i gotta rizz up my crush fuck whatever we're <laughs> learning i gotta rizz her up I gotta find like I gotta know what I gotta do. Like Right, like make your crush actually see you. That was the weirdest part of high school. Like I gotta put the outfit on Snap. I gotta let people know (laughs) that I'm the baddest bitch in school right now. Like I planned I planned my outfit out. I'm gotta be the baddest (laughs) bitch here. Just for us to it it was the worst when you (laughs) when you were feeling when you were feeling yourself for the day, so you put on your new clothing, and uh-huh. then in gym class, Khan's uh, like, "All right, we're going out to the field, to the football field." You're like, "Really? <laughs> I got the new Jordans on. Do you want me to run in these, or, um, uh, or like in uh, Ellis's class with dissecting? You're like, really?" Like we gotta dissect, and I'm. I hate it during games, during like basketball games where we have to actually dress up. I'm like, really? Mm-hmm. I gotta dress up, and I'm I'm suited up? Like, no. And, I remember I used to like try in high school with my clothes. I used to like be like, oh, I'm looking halfway decent today, and then like my junior year, I just fucking gave up. I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I don't care that I ain't rocking the freshest fucking brand new nikes or carrying a fucking iphone in my pocket like i can't afford my family can't afford this shit we're living paycheck to paycheck mm-hmm. like i kind of started dressing like a bum honestly like i would just wear fucking sweats and a sweater to school like even on the hottest fucking days i would just throw on a pair of sweats because i didn't care anymore like i wasn't there i i finally realized that i wasn't there for other people 
And I wish I would have realized that a lot sooner because I probably would have had a plan with my life. But in my brain, I was like, oh, I got to fit into the hierarchy of high school. I got to, you know, try and make friends and yada, yada, yada. And I finally realized, like, what's even the fucking point? None of you bitches are going to fucking talk to me after we graduate. Like, why even try? I know, because now it's like we got our tits out and shit. Like, people are just wearing whatever the <laughs> hell they want. I know. Like, Gen- like if we would have. But because and, and it's so, oh, no, no, you're good. That's so funny because, like, high school, senior, um, you know, just how everyone was and then now it's like oh all these all these gender classifications uh um the stereotypical gen z of how people dress now and right like they get away with wearing shit shit that we never would have gotten away with like they can wear fucking spaghetti straps now. They can fucking wear shorts that aren't like three inches from their knee. Like they can wear all this shit that we got in trouble for even like thinking of wearing to school. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, what the hell? And it's just like the standards are different. And I, I like I've told you before, I look at the high school and it's just depressing now. I'm like, how are people still mm-hmm. living here? How how is this still a school? And right. I'm like, yeah, no, I don't. I'm glad I'm gone. I'm glad I graduated high school. Glad I'm moving on in life because this shit don't like it. When people found out you were gay, if you even had any thoughts of being gay, that right. was the end. They that was the end all be all. Now they if, fucking exiled you. Exactly. And now when you if you say, hey, you know, I'm coming out as gay, like I've, I have felt this for a very long time, they'd be like, oh my God, good job. We are so happy you were coming out. Back then, like, like the, you gay boy. The standards are just so different. Like it's it's awful the way that we were treated and the way that like they were treated. Like it's gonna sound weird, but what did they do? differently than us to be like oh yeah we can wear spaghetti straps to school oh yeah it's cool to be gay like why why did they all of a sudden get that privilege of just being completely accepted and we just felt like we were doing something wrong for just being ourselves because back then they don't have the teachers that we have now that they have now i mean if the teachers that we had back then would humble the students now and because uh, I don't know how Foster right. is. I don't know how Foster is, is with a bunch of this stuff. Ellis, I don't know how he would have been. I wouldn't know. Ellis he would probably fucking... be supportive. Um, Mr. Yeah. Uh, Gifford would probably be supportive too. Cotton, he's just a complete asshole. Um, he's Cotton. I'm not even going to comment on that. <laughs> and he's cotton. And like, I know the one I know would be super, 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 super for, uh, forgiving and there for people who were like, you know, calling themselves non binary. They were gay, they were pan, mm-hmm. they were whatever they wanted to, to classify themselves as. Um, uh, what's her name? She fucking hated Esco. me. Esco? Miss Eska? Is it no, it's uh the English. It was it was the English. Oh, teacher. Miss <laughs> Mrs. Simmons. Simmons. Yes, <laughs> Miss Simmons. She, she hated you? She hated my ass. I don't know why. Why? I don't know why. You can ask there's okay. There was one day we were taking a quiz. You can even ask Evie, because I know damn well she'll remember it. I was sitting right next to her, right next to Evie. We were taking a quiz. Evie pulls out her phone, cheats on the quiz, and I told her, I pointed out, I'm like, fucking cheating? She's like, shut up. <laughs> Miss Simmons looked in our direction, didn't give a shit. She, I got yelled at because I was talking. I did the quiz. <laughs> I either got a zero out of ten or a one out of ten. <laughs> what? And... Evie got, I don't know, like a four out of ten or a six out of ten. She also failed it too. But I was, I was like, she cheated. How? 
That's unfair. She got a better grade than me. She cheated on it. Oh my god! And she wouldn't. She did not care. Because <laughs> then I would have raised hell. Yeah, I, I was a little bit pissed. I'm like, that's unfair. It's like she cheated, and and because then uh, when I was uh, eighth, ninth grade, I don't know if you remember uh, this teacher. Uh, Miss Diedrich? Yeah, I remember her. Yeah. Uh, I I I liked her. She was she was nice. She hated my ass too. <laughs> I mean, she was nice, but she I, I had a feeling she didn't like me because I was I was I wasn't the smartest kid. Like you could tell she had her favorites. Yep. She was like, kind of a she bitch, was to be honest. Kinda, yeah, but like she was nice i guess <laughs> yeah I like i said i'll explain kind of what why she didn't really like me i don't know if i was just talkative in class but i do know one day you can even you can ask jackie on this one my cousin <laughs> uh i don't I, I was genuinely confused on something and I kept asking her questions and she was getting annoyed. Kind of <laughs> like, are you even paying attention? I'm like, yes, I am genuinely confused on what the hell is going on. And it's always the <laughs> English teachers too. I know. I'm like, I'm genuinely confused. Like, how the hell do you want me to look at a refrigerator and and write you a poem? <laughs> and and only one of those poems are correct. The one the teacher wrote. I'm like, how the fuck you want me to do? How the fuck you want me to know about that? <laughs> and uh, I I don't remember what it was. So I got already gave her some bad vibes. And then right. um, since you know we can email the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> one day I decided. Again, you can ask Jackie. One day I decided, oh, no. you know what? Let me do let me let me let me do this. So I told oh, her, no. hey Miss Diedrich, you know, thank you for being such a cool t- uh, English teacher. I I don't remember if she was if she was English or what she was. I was like, you know, I love you because oh, I said no. I love you. Uh she had a talk with me and she said, I appreciate the message, but you cannot be saying I love you. Uh, because a that's weird. B explained, you know, the whole policy thing. She's like, you know, because you know, Robbins and all that can see that too. So you know, just explained a lot of that stuff. And I was like, I'm sorry, yeah, but she hated me because of that. Because I told her I love you on that. Like she was like weirded out with me. And like I said, you can ask Jackie on that one. She was there, and she every single time. I some not every single time, but a good chunk of the time that I was in her class, I just give her shit, saying, "Hey, hey, Miss Diedrich, I love you," <laughs> or or I say, "You know, do you love me? You know, am I your favorite student?" And oh she would God. always ignore that. And yeah, then late, literally my the next school year, she was gone. She wasn't there anymore. She probably left because of you. <laughs> probably. I mean, she did go back to gearing because she was originally, she originally went to gearing and then, oh shit, and then came to Minotaur and then went back to gearing. So I don't know if it was because they started paying her more or something. I don't know why. I'm not going to say it's all me. I wanted to try Minotaur for a few years. Maybe. How many years was she there? Like three? I swear she was there for like one. My ta- my conception of time in high school was all fuck- fucking thrown off. Like I, I remember like she made us a year. Yeah, I but. remember she made us write these poems about like things we're insecure about. And we had to like read them in front of the class. And Honestly, the only one I can remember is Alicia's because she was talking about body issues and like anorexia and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, this is a bit too dark for high school. Like we should not be, I mean, we should openly discuss it, but not in this setting. Mm -hmm. 
Like it made a lot, a lot of kids cry. Oh, her like, story or just she, her everyone. story and theirs. Like, like they would have to go up there and share their biggest fear with the entire class about themselves. And it would just, it was traumatizing because but, like a lot of us were being like really serious about it. Like topics of anorexia suicide like all of this was openly talked about in such a weird setting like i get it if you want to talk about like anorexia and suicide and stuff like that in school like do it in the right setting but reading in front of the class and having all of your peers staring up at you while you're reading it it's very nerve-wracking and i don't understand why she made us do that she, I'm glad I didn't have to do that, but <laughs> I just know that was probably fucking emotional. Like, it was. It was. Who's who, like, who's the hell is gonna say about like their penis size? Of I got a chode, <laughs> or or I got a micro penis. Right, or, like no one's gonna. Or my left tit is bigger than my right tit. Like, <laughs> what's like, is, what's someone gonna say on that one? Right. Like, I think mine was about struggling with, um, like mental illness and suicidal ideation and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And like the weird looks I got from everyone in my class after I had talked about suicide so openly, like it was weird. Like people were looking at me so differently. Like kind of like, why would you say that? Or kind of like, like, Oh my God we are so sorry for you no it was more like the looks were like oh she's just looking for attention and i'm assuming it was probably the popular people thinking that yep yeah they gave me the look like the the side eye like oh my god this bitch is crazy like she's gonna fucking kill us there and there's probably something about basketball (laughs) yeah um, but my, but Danny, my best friend, as you know, mm-hmm. she was kind of like the only, like after I got done reading and sat back down in my chair, cause I was like sobbing, like full on fucking crying and shaking and having a full ass panic attack mm-hmm. in the middle of class. And Danny was the only person who fucking could actually like honestly look at me. Like no one else would look at me cause I was just sobbing and she kind of like, you know that like that friendly touch where you kind of like move the thumb around like on their arm to kind of like comfort them like hey it's okay. Mm-hmm. She did that and I raised my hand I'm like Miss Deidre can I go to the bathroom and she kind of was like gave me this look like you better not have a sharp object. And she's like yeah you can go and I went to the bathroom and I stayed in that bathroom till the end of class. Like it was, it was traumatizing and fucking embarrassing. Jesus. Yeah, it was, it was interesting because it was just like everyone now knows my biggest secret. Mm -hmm. Like, and I was, I was sometimes, sometimes asked by people, like, are you okay? Like, with a pencil with like sharp objects like are you gonna kill yourself like i had random people asking me if i was gonna kill myself that is the most uncomfortable fucking thing in the world i bet especially because it was just for that class Mm -hmm. maybe maybe diedrich wanted that maybe she just wanted some drama she wanted some tea in her life because i know she was pregnant at the time when I that I, I knew, know. and yeah, so maybe, she was pregnant. So maybe it was just a pregnancy talking, and she maybe I because don't, I, don't know. I know how much women love crime shows, so she probably just wanted to see some drama. Mm-hmm. And I remember there was someone in my class. I don't remember who it was, but they had talked about how they were sexually assaulted. They didn't like throw out a name or anything, but they were they wrote a poem about being sexually assaulted, and it's like mm-hmm. whoa, like this. This is getting a bit too heavy for my liking. Like, if you want to talk to me one-on-one about it, like, I'll help you with that. But if you're going to fucking make us blast our personal lives to the rest of our class, like, that's 
that's where it starts getting a little, you know, uncomfy. Yeah. It's like, and because then, like, the next couple of days, like, what, how did she, like, was she, like, what did she ever say? Excuse me. Did she ever say anything to you or? You're good. Um, She just kind of, like, was always, like, whenever I would, like, pick up a pencil or something, she'd kind of just, like, glance over at me, like, okay, she's not going to stab herself. She's fine. Or, like, when um, we were writing a paper, and I don't remember what it was about, but she's like, hey, if you need, like, help with anything, you know, come talk to me. And I'm like, all right, thanks. And, like, just, it felt like the dynamic between me, the rest of my classmates, and her, it was so different. Like, it kind of felt like a safe space, but at the same time, it was like, everyone knows my secrets. Are you going to turn on me? Like, what are you going to do? Mm. It was kind of, it was, was kind of one, and kind of was, was it kind of one of those things of now, be, now that you guys have heard kind of like my story or the way I was feeling, don't feel sorry for me now just because. I have now right. since I've now said it. Don't don't give me that fake sorry type of bullshit. Like mm-hmm. when I needed you guys, none of you guys were there. So now that I have said yeah. how I felt, I don't want you guys to to feel sorry because that that's not who you guys right. are. Right? Yeah. I mean, in my head, that's what I was thinking, and I was like, "You y'all are fucking fake." Like. You're now acting like you care. Like, I was not popular in high school by any means. Like, I was... I was just kind of like... I feel like I was known as Danny's best friend, but I know that may not be the case. Mm-hmm. But, like, I was not a popular person by any means. Like, I feel like the social hierarchy was, like... Oh, the popular kids, the not so popular kids, the kids people know me, and then the kids no one talks to. And I was just like, all of you are fucking fake. Like, you act like you care, and you really don't. You don't Mm -hmm. care. Because once we graduate high school, the only person from high school I really talk to is Danny. Well, now I've kind of started talking to Cesar again, but not much. Um... But other than that, like, they're the only two people I talk to from my school. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't talk to Caitlin, Juana, Jalissa, Isaac, Caleb, Caden, Brayden, Evan, Devin. Like, I don't talk to anyone. Neither neither do I. Literally dry bones. Only thing that I'm doing is trying to ask people to be on the podcast. And Mm -hmm. I, if I get left on red on literally on, on delivered or a simple denial, I'm like, okay, fair. You didn't want to be on it. Cool. Fair. Um, I want to try to get E. I I kind of want to get E friend, but at the same time, I don't. Oh, so the E man. That's what I'm saying. I kind of want to get him, but I don't. And so, but even then, I don't know. I mean, it's. I don't talk yeah, to anyone I, there. Like, yeah, I get that because uh, I don't fucking talk to anyone either. Like, I I've heard from Ariana a little bit. Like, does Ariana she have Valdez. a kid now and whatnot? Valdez. Oh, Valdez! I thought you were <laughs> I was like, does she have a kid? I thought you were talking about but, Fry. I was like, don't she have a kid? But Valdez, I said, I've, I've just seen on Instagram and just looks like she's doing fine. I'm doing Yeah, okay. like, when I originally had bleached my hair and fucking fried my hair, she was like, oh, you can go to this place and this place and get, like, hair masks and stuff and, like, giving me advice on it. I'm like, okay, thanks. But other than that, I don't really hear from her or Haley or... Of course, I don't hear from Sally and Alexandra and Juana and Jalissa and all them. Like, that's mm-hmm. 
that was not a part of a crew that I was in. Like I was mm-hmm. not, I was nowhere near that level of popularity. Mm-hmm. So like literally the only people I talk to are Danny and Cesar and that's it. Well, I mean, now you're on, now you're on the broke boy podcast team. So now <laughs> I mean, you will yeah. I mean, we'll get in contact here and there. Cause really like, for people that if they've even listened this far, obviously, right? I mean, you'd be just an assistant right now. Obviously, I can't pay you because I'm not, I'm not making that right. But like, when I, I do, I will obviously, like, I have to pay my employees, like, obviously. Um, I mean, I was, I was, I'm cool with not being paid, like, I would just literally do this as a hobby, and I mean, and that's that's on you. I feel bad, and I like, don't feel bad. I don't feel bad, but so <laughs> when when we get funds, when the funds start rolling in, obviously I'll pay you. Obviously, but kind of you know, your job more than like more than so is just gonna be you know helping helping me get guests, scheduling, find people, <laughs> basically in a way, kind of like do that, I'll speak with them, and then you can then. Uh, Get with me and you know, tell me about them and whatnot, and then right. obviously just talk to each other of any update and just a bunch of other shit that that happens. I said I will get you your own uh, Microsoft Office account, like the full bone shebang Office account. Okay, and it'll be uh, like I, said, I haven't created it yet, but when I do, you know, people can get in contact with you at like b dot russell at brookboy dot com. You'll have your own email, all right. that stuff. And eventually, when I get married, we'll we'll have to change that because. Well, yeah, like once you get married <laughs> to your boy, you know, <laughs> and boy? by that and by that time, if it's so, it, you know, if funds are already going on, you know, we'll be posting you all over. Like, oh my god, she's she married. Oh my god, <laughs> uh, you know, just right. a bunch of uh, that type of stuff. <laughs> just boring <laughs> screams. Ah, uh. ah, uh, just you know, a bunch of that stuff. <laughs> But um, yeah, but I do have to go to the bathroom. I don't know if you saw me squirm a lot. I I'm holding it in. <laughs> I do gotta go. I mean, um, that's cool. Do you want to end the podcast here? Or yeah, cause it's gonna be a little it... bit. And okay, I want to. I don't want to keep you waiting. <laughs> it's fine. I can. I'm not doing anything. So if you don't want to, if you don't want to have, if you don't have enough like content at the moment, I could stay as long as you need. Perfect, perfect. Like I said, I am gonna take a little bit in the bathroom, so I don't wanna keep you waiting and and whatnot. And so but I enjoy enjoyed the episode, enjoy talking. Yes. Obviously, you know, we have a bunch of other stuff that we've kind of already uh covered before. Right, yeah. Um, but again, I mean, welcome to the team. Yours will be Thanks. posted this Sunday. Uh, okay. At eleven in the morning. And again, I mean, since I'll be able to email you a bunch of other stuff, I'll probably, you know, show you previews and whatnot, what can be put, what will get posted and, and all the fun shit, you know? All right. Bet. That kind of helped me out. And, you know, so then I can have someone, someone's other, someone else's feedback on what maybe could right. work or change and whatnot, not just all myself. So fair enough. Yeah. But, but yeah, but. it sounds like a plan. I'll, I'll see you then. See ya, see ya, see ya. You have a great rest of your day. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.